1984 supernatural comedy Ghostbusters wasn't just a smash hit blockbuster. It was a goddamn phenomenon. It became ingrained in pop culture and very much remains relevant to this day. There was a butt ton of merch, including the 1988 NES game, which was a major disappointment. The following year, Ghostbusters 2 hit the theaters, and although it was nowhere near as good as the original, it was still very successful in the box office, and I personally think it's better than a lot of people give it credit for. But after another successful run, naturally there'd be another video game for the franchise. While Ghostbusters 2 on an AS is technically a sequel to the original, it retains nothing from its predecessor, basically going back to the drawing board and revamping the game from the ground up. This is not only because the game had a different developer, but this time the movie was out before the game was made, so the designers could actually utilize elements from the film. The first game was created before anyone had even seen it, and it was actually a retread from some other game the main programmer, David Crane, was putting together. So these two games are very different from each other. Firstly, it's a side-scrolling shooter, at least for about half the game. You've also got driving stages where you pilot the Ecto-1 or the Statue of Liberty, which only sounds weird if you haven't seen the movie. The stages are modeled after scenes from the film, but aside from the pure aesthetics, they're not any different from each other. There are no platforms or pits or anything, just a straight line from one side to the other, and all the enemies behave the same way. You've got ones that bounce towards you or vertically in a fixed spot, the ones that glide in a straight line, and the ghosts that drop red slime turds and fly around. I mean, they behave a little differently from each other, but every stage has the same lineups more or less. Just different sprites to fit the theme of the stage or whatever. Like this gavel in the courthouse does the same shit as this horse statue, for example. Making matters worse regarding the monotony of it all, the background music is the same, at least through the side-scrolling levels, which is a new rendition of the Ghostbusters theme, which, as you may remember, was played back throughout the entire game of the original. So aside from the enemies being lame, there's also no boss battles, even more lame, especially when you've got plenty of room for creativity in a universe with paranormal beings. And that includes the lead villain of the movie, Vigo the Carpathian. He shows up in cutscenes, building him up as the final boss, but spoiler alert, you don't even face off against him at the end of the game. Not really, anyway. During the side-scrolling levels, you'll control a specific Ghostbuster, even though they don't have any unique attributes or anything to differentiate them. They're really just as much of palette swaps as a lot of the enemies in the game. It suggests that the Ghostbusters split up and are taking out ghosts in different parts of the city at the same time until they congregate at the Statue of Liberty leading up to the final showdown, I guess. At least the driving stages change things up a little bit. Not that they're much fun either. There's a lot of trial and error when deciding when to slow down so you can take out the ghosts easier, or to stay on course and hit jumps that take you over the huge ass pits in the middle of the road. And what's with these massive holes in the road? I thought this was New York City, not Detroit. Maybe this is a callback to that massive earthquake from the original Ghostbusters, I don't know. What I do know is that shooting your slime gun, yeah, you're controlling the positivity slime from the movie to neutralize all the hate ghosts, but the shooting function of the game is a bit awkward. You use up and down on the D-pad to toggle the angle of your gun. It doesn't feel natural at all, even after you get used to it. The other thing is, so many enemies you're meant to avoid, like these bouncy things, there's a lot of them, and these vertically scrolling hazards you have to walk past, there's a lot of shit like that that kinda sucks the fun factor level down a few pegs. You do at least get to use a trap, which you use by pressing the start button, which should have been pause, and the trap should have been select, that would have made more friggin' sense. Instead, you not only get no pause button at all, but the jump and shoot buttons are reversed from the norm. Jump is B and shoot is A, making the whole thing even more awkward than it already was. But the trap is nice, even though there's a bit of a delay in its activation, so you have to anticipate a little, which makes sense, you'd otherwise be spamming the shit out of it. Then there's this stupid little spider that steadily follows you. You can't kill it, and once it reaches you, you're dead. It's the most dangerous spider I've ever seen in my life. It essentially acts as a, not really an auto-scroller, but it does force you to move once it starts getting close. 
There's also a two-player mode, although all that really is is taking turns after the other player dies, so big whoop. Overall, the game is an improvement over its predecessor, but still had a lot of flaws. It's playable, but it needed a lot of rough edges smoothed out, and a lot more meat on the plate. So as you start the game, you see Vigo vow to destroy you, although he is currently just still in the painting and hasn't been transformed yet. And you get a cutscene of Ray, the first Ghostbuster you'll be in control of, being lowered into the sewer, which is where the first stage takes place in. Head left, and let this bouncing pirate head leap over you. Position yourself accordingly. Same thing with this yellow lantern. Watch out though, it's faster than the pirate head. Watch out for the green slime droplets from the ceiling. If they hit you, you'll be momentarily stuck in place, and blast the slimers when they pass by. And watch for the droplets of hate slime they shit out at you. These larger yellow spiders slowly elevate, and then drop down quickly. Slip by when they start to raise, and then wait for the next one to do the same. It's similar to the thwomps in Super Mario 3. As you traverse through this level, be sure to hit any Ghostbusters logos along the way. If you get 20, you'll get an extra life. As you get towards the home stretch, be ready to jump over this hand that pops out of nowhere and runs across the screen. I guess Thing from the Adams Family died and came back as a vengeful spirit in the Ghostbusters universe. At the end, you'll run into another bouncing yellow head, but this one isn't a pirate. And he bounces a lot lower, which rules out letting him bounce over you. If you line yourself up and jump at the right angle, it's possible to jump over him, but this is one of those spots that's best served to use the trap. Stage ends shortly thereafter. Stage 2 is the first driving level of the game. Head to the first lane up top, quickly drop to the fourth lane at the bottom to hit the booster, represented by the purple arrow, and then go back to the top to hit the one opening there. And then drop back down and jump over the short hurdle. You'll then encounter these Halloween ghosts that mostly float around, but if they're on the screen long enough, they'll fire a glob of hate slime. Blast them away, and keep your eyes peeled above you for Ghostbusters logos. You'll not only shoot forward, but also straight above the car, too. There are also quite a few of these logos on the street you can simply drive over to pick them up. Hold left on the D-pad to slow down while maneuvering between all this bullshit, or any time you want to see what's ahead of you a little more particularly the slime attacks from the ghosts. But be weary of these manhole covers that are fired out of the street by the hate slime. There are two jumps in this stage, one right after the other. Both of them have boosters you can use to jump across. Be sure to hit the jump button when you cross it. The goddamn thing changes lanes though, so watch for the timing of it, and be sure to hit the jump button along with it or you won't get enough hang time to reach. Then the slimers show up and fire hate slime. Slow your ass down to see their attacks coming, similar to the ghosts, and the end of the stage is just ahead. Stage 3 takes place in the courthouse, and you play as Winston, which is kind of weird considering Winston was the only Ghostbuster who wasn't on trial in the movie. I don't know, maybe he's coming to save the day or something. The first few enemies just float overhead or bounce towards you. Line yourself up so they bounce over you. Then after a slimer, this gavel comes running across the floor. Quickly jump over it. Then you'll see these briefcases floating in a sloppy figure eight pattern. Watch for the opening and walk on by. After the second briefcase, you'll immediately encounter another gavel. Jump over it quickly. Soon after is a huge ass slimer. Now you might be able to kill it with your regular gun, but I've never been able to do it. This one is for the trap. Right after will be another briefcase followed immediately by a gavel, along with some slimers thrown into the mix. Once you get by them, the stage is over, and you get a brief cutscene, or a single screenshot really, showing the Ghostbusters being released. So I guess Winston really was responsible for saving the day. Stage 4 is the next driving stage. It starts out with these bouncy balls of hate slime, roadblocks, and green walls that pop out of nowhere. Keep your speed down in this area, but be ready to pick up speed and hit a booster to jump over the pit. You'll hit a buttload of Halloween ghosts after that. Keep yourself moving slow until you wipe them all out. Then you'll get two pits lined up right against each other. Remember to press B to jump right as you land on the booster for the second pit. 
then it's an instant replay. Another batch of ghosts, and then another two pits. Then you've got a standalone pit, and once you make that jump, it's Slimer Central. These things weave like crazy. Best thing to do is keep yourself in one lane and try to line up your shot for where they're going to be as opposed to maneuvering your car to try to line up where they are. Keep the car slow during the segment too. It makes it easier to predict their movements and see their attacks coming. After that, the stage is over and Vigo spouts off more bullshit claiming he will rule again. Stage 5 is the subway where you play as Egon. Now this should have been the stage for Winston. He was the one that had the encounter with the ghost train. Egon should have been in the courthouse. Whatever. At the beginning you've got a bell, a whistle, and a spike that bounce around at different heights. The bell and spike are avoidable by letting them bounce over you, but that damn whistle is too low to stay under and too high to jump over without timing it exactly right. And since the spike is directly behind it, the likelihood of avoiding all three of these fucking things is slim to none. So just bust out the trap. You get the same triplets again right after. Whip out the trap again. Then you'll get a bunch of slimers. Wipe them all out, and then once again these frickin' bouncy railroad accessories come barreling towards you, along with the slimer. Trap their asses. Then a brick will glide across the floor. Quickly jump over it and position yourself so you don't hit the decapitated head. You'll then run into a couple sets of these lanterns. Walk through when the opening presents itself, and after passing a bat that does the same figure eight patterns as the briefcases from earlier, the stage is over. Stage six puts you in control of the Statue of Liberty, mirroring the movie when they actually used an NES advantage to guide Lady Liberty through the city. First, you gotta get her through the bay. Tons of ghosts float around overhead, sometimes dropping projectiles on you. In this segment, you won't die from one hit. Instead, you can take six hits before losing a life, although this only applies to slime projectiles. If the ghosts make contact with you, you're dead. There are also some power-ups here besides the logos. You've got torches that let you momentarily change the direction of your attacks. Normally, you're just firing straight up into the air, which is generally fine. Most of the hazards come from directly above you anyway. If you press the B button, you can launch an explosive into the air that wipes out all the enemies on the screen. And once it's gone, you'll start seeing them available to pick up as well. They're represented by these books. The enemies throughout this stage are all more or less the same, they just have different patterns. First, these airshow ghosts that float around in snake formation dropping slime. They usually stay high enough, but will swoop down every now and again to try to hit you. Button mash like a madman to take them all out in a row. Then these guys seem fairly harmless. They don't really get too low, but I've seen them drop down low enough to hit you. So if you can get the angled shots going, take them out from there because they'll be coming at you from a 45 degree angle if anything. Then there are these banana ghosts that pop out of the water and slowly sail back down. Stay under them and fire rapidly to keep them from landing on you. In between these batches of ghosts is what the game calls a bonus round, where you'll get nothing but power-ups, generally logos, on the screen. And there are a lot of logos throughout this stage, so blast as many of them as you can to farm up some lives as you inch closer to the home stretch of the game. Soon after, the stage is over, and Vigo cuts another promo about taking over New York. The seventh stage also puts you in command of the most expensive gift from France ever. This time you're walking through the city, and this time you're under attack by a litany of possessed clouds. Because specters are your enemies here, this is the only explanation that I have. They fire lightning at you at such a hard angle that it covers a lot of ground, making it very difficult to avoid. Especially these asshole clouds at the bottom where it's very tough to gauge their attack. The best thing you can do here is maximize your power-ups. Hit as many of the torches and books as you can to give yourself an angle to hit oncoming lightning easier, and to blow as many of these pricks up at once, respectively. Then you'll get these ghosts that float around and wobble to the ground like a balloon that just got popped. Stay under them and fire upward. Skeletons will fall out of the sky too. They start moving slow and then pick up speed. Fire straight up at them rapidly to clear them out. Then there are these banana ghosts. These sons of bitches are like moths. Their patterns are so erratic, you're just gonna have to fire like a madman at whichever one's closest to you. 
is kill or be killed. Then these patches of raspberry slime come pouring down at you from invisible ghosts. This slime moves similar to the lightning from the clouds, but here you can't see where they're coming from, so be ready to react quickly. Try to hit as many logos as you can during the quote unquote bonus rounds. You might get an extra life or two, and you'll need as many as you can to get through this shit, as well as the next stage, which is a good news, bad news situation. The good news is, this is the last stage. The bad news is, you have to complete it four fucking times, one with each Ghostbuster, and each run is different. The enemy placements are not the same for Egon as they are for Rey, for example. So it's more like there are 11 stages in this game, because each of these four segments are essentially a stage of their own. First man up is Rey, and you've got a couple of these floating statues to start. Pass through when there's an opening, but be careful of the one with the candlestick going at the same time. Watch for when the candles are just on their way up before heading through. After a bunch of these floating fucks, get ready to jump as this small horse statue glides across the floor. 95% of the Rey segment is pretty much these floating pricks. Time your approach well, blast the slimers overhead, and watch out for that stupid fucking horse. When you get to the end, Ray will start blasting the Vigo painting with slime. Next up is Winston. After a few slimers, these heads will bounce towards you. Lay out the trap to catch the second one at the very least, the others you can let bounce over you if the trap doesn't get them. Jump over the horse, but get low quick to get under the statue and then jump over another horse. A giant slimer will then appear with his smaller minion children. Run past them and set the trap so they walk right into it, or float right into it, really. After that, it's entirely made up of floating bullshit to maneuver through and some slimers. Just watch for the bullshit slime that drips from the ceiling to hold you in place for a bit. You can really fuck up your rhythm. When you get to the end, Winston joins Ray in coating the Carpathian with slime. Next up is Egon. You'll first encounter the same statue head gauntlet that Winston did. Lay the trap out. There are a ton of slimers here. Fire away at them. The floating statues and candles are really close to each other in this part, making it difficult to find the safe zone in between. Keep your eye on where the landing spots are on the wobbly guys. It'll make it easier to gauge your target. After that, you'll find two giant slimers. You definitely want to lay the trap out for these creeds. Another line of floating fuckers, and Egon joins his brethren in showering the big bastard in slime. Finally, you get to play as Peter. Lay a trap early to get these statue heads out of your hair. Then shit all starts hitting the fan at once. You've got a giant slimer that pops out right as these horses try to cut the legs out from under you. Lay the trap and swallow them all up at once. Then you've got three bouncy things that all bounce high enough to let them pass over you. But they move at different speeds, so pay attention to where the safe spots are. Then you got three bouncy bastards that are too low to let them pass over you, so you want to lay the trap out for them. Then it's the holy fuck look at all the shit going on at once part. You'll want to lay the trap for the giant slimer, wait for the candle to raise, jump to let the horses pass under you, and run through the opening. And you'll reach the end where the entire quartet finish off Vigo before he can even exit the painting, carry a baby, or possess Ray momentarily. You get a cover story in the New York Times, uh, the New York News, and the credits roll. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.